to my humble hacienda. Um, I want to thank you for being here. And um, my name is Verde Arbusto, and this is the Schumann Resonance Harmonics channel on YouTube and Facebook. And thank you for being here. Uh, I often learn when I pursue a subject. I mean, I you know, I'm only the expert, the resident expert, of YouTube land, as I see it, uh, on the Schumann, um, because I've spent so much time researching in my spare time, and that's all I talk about with anyone, and, you know, so on and so forth. So, um, you know, so, uh, um, this is, um, part three of, uh, the scenic route of, you know, how are we getting these oddball data stripes Ba ding ding and the, the, the blackout there um, we've seen this before recently and um, you know it's it, it's something that we need to ask uh, how how are these oddball anomalies showing up um, many people who are not even familiar with what the the Schumann really is what it's showing can see, it, they're asking, it, you know, something, see something weird, and they're asking, you know, is this normal, is it natural, uh, and of course, the answer is, no, it's not, it's a computer artifact, um, but it's important to, to know that, um, it's, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a, a local problem and not a worldwide problem, I guess, it's one of the, the, uh, issues of concern, like, oh no, it's not really a thing that's happening. Um, uh, um, Dr. Ben at uh, Suspicious Observers, I have mentioned this before, you know, he refers to uh, these as the, the broken Russian machines, <laughs> which I thought was kind of funny, you know, maybe snicker, um, uh, as we have seen in previous uh, um, to summarize, we've seen in previous uh, articles, you know, we talked about, you know, the 15-year range of the Schumann monitoring. Um, so we're assuming that these machines are, you know, figured 20 years old because, you know, if they've been operating for 15 years, they would have had to have been ordered 20 years ago and installed then. So you have to look at it that way. If, the, if they've been constantly monitoring them, for 15 years, as and I'm just going by the data I have. You know, this is our hypothetical model of what's going on. 
the, the, the Tomsk Observatory people, you know, they've stated, you know, we're doing this 15 years, so here's our sample data from way back when, 86. I think they, they show uh, a sample set for. Um, so we have their, their commitment to, yeah, 15 years constant observation. That means it took, like, you know, a few years to get it all working properly, as, such as it were. So, this is where we're at with Tomsk, and we've seen the complications that it takes to make the signal go through to get it from point A to point B. And uh, there's a, um, an, a, how is it described, a, a low noise amplifying filter chain that comes to getting this signal here this is the amplitude, and this is from a few days ago. This is our first sight of that the oddball data, and I want to zoom in so we can see all of it. There we go. Okay, yay! All right, so we have white, yellow, red, and green, and you see there's this flat spot, and then there's a the spike, and so it's not just okay. So. Let me remind us all that the antenna here Oh, I took that article out. Okay, yeah, how fun. Nice, okay. So, um, I moved... There was an article where it talks about the noise in the... Um, uh, uh, noise, and so what I will do is, while I'm finding that, I will listen to some noise. So here, they have bring up a point of the observations of natural ENF. They have observations of the <clears throat> the ball antenna. Okay, so A simple observing system for the measurements of the vertical electric field component of natural ELF and VLF electromagnetic noises by using a ball antenna is described. With this system, it is possible to measure long-traveled natural ELF noises discriminated from natural local noises due to such as atmospheric, electric, space charge fluctuations. Some of the typical recorded noises are shown. Observed ELF noises are divided into three characteristic types. ELF flash, ELF burst, that's N and Q types, and ELF continuous. ELF flashes originate from the lightning discharges in the area within the one kilometer from the observing station. <coughs> Excuse me. Currences of ELF bursts are more frequent in the daytime than in the nighttime and are characterized by a sudden increase at the time of local sunrise, suggesting the related mechanisms of the generation to the solar position relative to the Earth. And type bursts are followed by VLF noises. Some distances of these bursts, which are followed by tweak-type atmospherics in the night, are estimated to be in the range of from 2,500 to 5,000 kilometers. Q-type bursts often show near oscillations of the frequencies of Schumann resonances. The daily variations of the mean amplitude of VLF continuous, which composes the background noise for 
quite similar to the daily variations of the world thunderstorm activity. All right. So, <clears throat> that, this is a side note. This is off topic. Okay. But I'm talking about, what we're talking about is in our forensic work here. Okay. Let me go back. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, in our forensic work, we have... Oh, sorry. All right. So, this. This here. Okay. So, in the Schumann... All right. So, we have a line here. Dead line. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Across all of these. Okay. Now, it's important to know that the ball, this, the amplitude, is the ball antenna. Okay? We're learning something here about this. This is the amplitude portion. It's the electrics. It's a ball antenna. And I'm going to have to find a picture of one of them for you so you can see, just as a... a, a one of these articles has a picture of it. Um, so these right here, the quality, are the two magnetic induction coil. So if you've got two different types of antennas, and, and this is the speedometer, and look at that. I'm going to, let me zoom, zoom the F-bomb in here. can't see it from where it is. All right, so there we go. All right, so I'm, I'm showing right now, I'm showing frequency. All right, so... All right, so what do these all have in common? All right, so the frequency is measured by a different, like it's a speedometer kind of thing. Okay, so you, you look at how, like I'm finding this interesting. So you have this one, the red is, is uh, all of these are where they're, z that's not zero. This is like in the middle of the chart here. And then this one here is at the bottom of the chart. I'm just looking at these very interesting. I can't really even, I get a, I'm having a hard time showing this. All right, so thank you for sticking with me. Uh, I'll call this one a test too. All right, so this one here, the 4.9 is at the bottom of the, the chart. So this one here, the white mode is at, hello. The white mode is at the bottom of its chart. The yellow mode is at the bottom. The red, this one here is, is hovering at, 5.9 and 6. Point, you know 10 and so no, all right so in the frequency the speedometer thingy here that's measuring this all right the depth gauge uh, this meters way up here okay so I'm just pointing out relative in this one here the green is stuck right there in the midpoint this one here the yellow is you know the second one up this one here the uh, you know that's a red again in its metal all right so <clears throat> Even though these are, are, are kind of dead meters, it's still showing you something here. And take of this what you will. I don't know. I'm not giving any presumptions of what, what this is or how or why. I'm just making this as an interesting point. And these all here, the ball meters, like this is telling you something. I'm not sure what it's telling you. But the ball meters here, they're all the ball antenna. Okay, these are the electrics. They're all zeroed out. You can see they're all zeroed out in the relatively the same place. This one here, the quality, these are the um, magnetic meters. There's a north to south and an east to west alignment with those. Okay, you got to remember this too. We read that. We saw that earlier in this, in this little uh, three-part series where he's talking about the two magnetic meters back to back with a t with a total uh, length of 60 centimeters. Okay. Um, all right. So 
we're, we're talking about the screwball data here. I'm giving some general overall uh, pointers and, 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 and images of what this are, that this is plotted by, you see it's divided up by these stripes, okay? That within an hour, within an hour you have a number of stripes within that, that course of now. It's a tiny, I'm not gonna go, I'm not sure if I can even go in close enough. All right, so if you look at it, you'll see there's tiny, in the, and it may not be able to see it well, but there's tiny stripes within the lines. And it just continues in a repetitive pattern continues in repetitive pattern <clears throat> sort of at that kind of, I don't know how to put it at that, it's a like a, a skip or a repeat <clears throat> and so um, there's somewhere in the, 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 the chain of getting the signal <clears throat> somewhere of getting the signal uh, you wind up with those oddball um, patterns. So I'm going to take a drink for a moment. <clears throat> I think I'm going to have to pause this and actually make some coffee. Um, so, thank you all for being here with me. Um, if I haven't said this already, I'm Verder Busto, and this is the Schumann Resonance Harmonics channel um, on YouTube and on Facebook. And, um, you know, I thank you all for being here. Uh, my name is Verder Busto. Um, so, the general overall uh, point of this video here is an introduction to this. Uh, this article here uh, from the um, Eurosip. <laughs> I love that Eurosip Journal of Wireless Communications and Networking. back. I made my coffee, and uh, speaking of love, uh, coffee is my first love, I, I must confess. You know, as we're in these, these days uh, <clears throat> where, where there's a, um, <clears throat> so I want some more coffee here, <clears throat> clear my throat. So in these days, where we are facing a lot of this electrics and magnetics whamming us with stuff, uh, um, you know, it's important to keep yourself grounded and to, to monitor what you, you intake that affects your central nervous system. That, if, that includes caffeine, that includes stimulants, that includes uh, medications. Um, you know, I'm not going to go into that as a, a topic, but it's something to to watch because people do take medications that aren't prescribed for them, and so that is a thing. Uh, you know, Ritalin is a common thing, or Adderall's, you know, uh, <clears throat> which gets back to stimulants. Um, if if that's your of the type that that is a stimulant. Uh, and as always, I'm not a medical guy. Consult your medical uh, professional. Um, whatever, and if you have a prescription that's different, whatever, I'm not talking about that. But I'm talking about generally as relative to a technician talking about the electromagnetics of the body and the central nervous system, uh, you know, watch what uh, y you intake. And I have done, uh, I, there was a, um, an article about potassium. I included that in with, I think, one of the browser dumps, the so-called browser dumps, 
uh, but I'm going to uh, go back to that. There's a lot of health-related stuff that uh, I'm going to talk about relative to the you know, electrolytes and the, the physics of the, the electromagnetics of what's happening to the body. Um, <clears throat> all right, so anyway, in this case, uh, we are um, on course here. We're talking about uh, this article here from uh, the European um, uh, Agency Wireless Communication Networking uh, Journal, um, Eurosim. Okay. So I've uh, uh, referenced this particular... Uh, I've referenced this particular article before in the past, and I'm, I'm bringing it up now because uh, I like this particular article because they don't go into too much of the, the equations first and foremost. They, they talk about some general conditions of the Schumann, and then I think he, I'm pretty sure they've got uh, some, some illustrations uh, so you can see. Um, there's figures and diagrams. It's a pretty good article. And that's why I'm, I'm coming to this uh, uh, for a, a, a general um, synopsis on the Schumann antenna amplifying filter chain. All right. So, uh, a new portable ELF Schumann resonance receiver designed a detailed analysis of the antenna and the analog front end. All right. So... And I talked about uh, Konstantinos Votis, uh, the other uh, Iona, uh, University of Iona, and Iona, Nini of uh, Greece. Um, I know I butchered that, um, but I apologize. Right. So these guys are all basically from the same place. All right. So, uh, <clears throat> abstract. Schumann resonance oscillations detection is a complex procedure which requires customized and high-quality measurement systems. The primary objective of this work was to design and implement a standalone, portable, and low-cost receiver able to measure as much Schumann resonance harmonics as possible. Design, as well as detailed analysis of the efficient induction coil magnetic antenna and the low-noise filtering amplifying filtering chain is presented. The detection system includes two coils back-to-back, -back, resulting in a total coil length of 60 centimeters. The filtering and amplification chain exhibits an experimentally measured total bandpass gain equal to 112 decibels at 10 hertz and as low as 2.88 nanovolts uh, over the square root of a hertz. <laughs> um, the equivalent. I mean, I'm just trying to read that, what the hell that is. It's a square root um, over a hertz. Okay. So, equivalent input noise. In order to validate the new portable ELF Schumann resonance detection and monitoring system, we took measurements at various spots relatively free from man-made electromagnetic pollution. Results have shown very clear Schumann resonance peaks for the first six modes, with 10 minute acquisition time. Okay. Right. Introduction. The Schumann resonances, SR, are electromagnetic oscillations of the Earth ionosphere cavity at frequencies of 7.8, 14, 20, 26, 33, 39, and 45 hertz. The long time monitoring of the Schumann phenomena has recently drawn attention, not least from the space geophysics community. One, two, three. SR measurements and the analysis provide information on the planetary thunderstorm activities, the properties of lower ionosphere layers, and the Earth surface and atmosphere temperature variations, and the properties of earthquakes, as well as on the studies of other celestial bodies. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So they're talking about they've done studies on Titan, they've done studies on Mars, I think, and, and whatever, other, other planets are. Consequently, increased interest has been shown by the scientific community of the methods and techniques employed in SR experimental detection. The detection of human resonances is a complex procedure that employs the limited energy generated and dissipated by the global lightning activity. This total energy is then smeared, I love that, 
inside the huge volume of the Earth ionosphere cavity, providing electric and magnetic field components. The prevailed electric component is vertically oriented, and the corresponding amplitude is close to 10 to the negative 7 volt per meter. Uh, the magnetic field exhibits low horizontally horizontally potential component at north-south and east-to-west orientation with amplitudes of few tenths of picotesla. The detection of such weak electromagnetic fields in noisy environments is too difficult. Additionally, hardware imperfections can significantly reduce the performance of the system, uh, links 10 to 11, Yeah, there we go. I'm just checking to see if we got it. And my time. All right. uh, to improve, to improve the signal to noise ratio (SNR), it is necessary to use specialized sensors and electronic equipment. Twelve, especially in the ELF band, extremely low frequency, where Schumann resonances lie. Very few works give details about measurement equipment used regarding electrical and magnetic antennas the analog front end, and the data acquisition module, 13. In the observation system of ULF, ELF, uh, emissions at Naka, Nakat Sugawa, I believe, the signal observed by the north-south sensor, each coil consists of permalloy of 1.2 meter turn with uh, 100,000 100, turns of the copper wire is fed to a preamplifier, then to a low pass filter of 10 and 30 hertz and a main amplifier stored on DL708 data recorder and saved on a hard, hard disk. Summarized values of the induction coils, the amplification, and filtering are given for the observation system of ULF ELF emissions at N Nakatsugawa, I think. I'm going to say it the best I can. Nakatsugawa. You, you get my intention. It's the uh, Japanese station. There is um, two uh, in Japan, as far as I know. One's in Hokkaido. And the other here in Natasakagawa. Uh, unless it's the same one and there's somehow one's a city and one's a state. I don't know. Sorry. Right. So anyway. Uh, two research teams from Mexico have developed the Schumann Resonance Station with two inductive antennas. Details about the structure and the development of the magnetic antenna are given. The station measures the first three harmonics, 15, in SR Schumann Resonance Observatories in southwestern China, the frequency band of the instruments is about 3 to 29 hertz in the range of 3 decibels, and the sampling frequency is 100 hertz. So the sample, the data stripes here in China are 100 hertz. Okay, the sampling frequency, I'm sorry, the, the how do I say this? The sampling rate is how many times per second it takes a sample. So in a second, it takes 100 samples. So that's a, a data stripe is what we're talking about here. Okay, These, the, the data stripe is a sampling frequency. I don't want to get too much into it, but uh, that's when I talk about stripes, this is what, what it's basically talking about is a sampling frequency. All right, like... If you're talking about a CD, a compact disc, the sampling rate of going of of transition from the the analog to a digital sample, depending on the quality, is 44.1k, 44.1 thousand times per second. You're taking a sample of where the music is at. Well, this does 100 of those in you know, the same time that one's doing 44.1 thousand, this is taking one, you know, 100 samples. All right, so if you can kind of wrap your head around that. All right, uh, well, oh, 29 minutes, gotta watch the time. There's a notch filter at 50 hertz to suppress industrial interference in the electronics part of 16. D 
details in a block diagram concerning associated electronics of the TNB Antarctic Schumann Measurement Platform are presented by a research team from Italy in the Schumann station located at Calor Alto, Spain. Modes are captured through the 2 meter magnetic antenna with an acquisition time of 30 minutes. All right, so it takes them 30 minutes to get a sample. All right, so every, uh, how do I put this? They're, they're taking a sample every 30 minutes, if I'm not mistaken. Or, or it takes, I, I'm, I'm, I believe I, I, I read this, the, the acquisition time is the amount of time it takes to get the signal itself from the antenna down the line to its final end. We've, you know, we've just talked about how much what it takes. So down to the final end is the acquisition time, if I'm not mistaken, is 30 minutes. Characterization of the sensor, characterization of the sensor, and detailed description of the amplification system are also presented. The magnetometers, noise of the system, uh, this is going to be a part, there's going to be another part because I'm at 31 minutes and I'm going to uh, wrap it up soon. <laughs> and the ELF measurement station that has been deployed in Sierra Nevada, Spain are described and discussed in five research teams from Spain and Sweden. The technical setup of the Hyalati geophysical station with a frequency range up to 300 hertz, as well as the design of ELF equipment, including antennas and receivers, is discussed by three research teams from Poland. In this paper, a versatile receiver for Schumann resonance detection monitoring is presented. The SR detection and monitoring system is portable, low cost, battery operated or battery powered, autonomously for nearly 45 days time and able to measure up to six harmonics resonances. Six SR harmonic resonances. All right. All right. So I'm at the end of, uh, end of this. I'm, I'm going to have to make another session. Uh, so I'll have to remember. I'll pick that up, I think, where we talk about... Um, uh, the magnometers and the you know the noise system, uh, or whatever. All right, so Maestro, do you got any music? No. All right. So on that cheery note, uh, I'm taking us out with something to help cleanse our brain.